Not everyone uses SQL, but if you do, wouldn't it be nice to be able to use machine learning within your SQL environment? BigQuery ML does just that. Stay tuned to find out how. Welcome to AI Adventures, where we explore the art, science, and tools of machine learning. My name is Yufeng Guo, and on this episode, we're going to try out BigQuery ML, which enables you to create and execute machine learning models in BigQuery using standard SQL queries. Currently, BigQuery ML, or BQML for short, supports linear regression, binary logistic regression, and multi-class logistic regression. Linear regressions are models which predict a numerical value, like an insurance premium or a home value. Binary logistic regressions are models which predict one of two classes, like identifying whether a machine needs to be checked for maintenance work, a yes or a no, or perhaps more famously, whether an image is a cat or a dog. Multi-class logistic regressions are models which predict more than two classes. For example, whether or not uh, you should buy, hold, or sell a stock, or if, say, traffic on the highway is light, medium, heavy, or a parking lot. Let's see what BQML looks like in practice. You can access it via the BigQuery UI or through the command line and API. Today, we'll look at it on the BigQuery UI, but the queries we'll use are identical to if you use the command line or the API. I've got some sample data here from Google Analytics taken from a BigQuery public data set. We did an episode on the BigQuery public data sets program a while back, so be sure to check that out to learn more about all the public data sets that are free for you to use. Now let's take a look at our data set today. Notice that we're looking specifically at whether or not a transaction took place. That's what we'll be trying to predict later on. Now what will we base these predictions on? We have the operating system of the user's device, whether it was a, a mobile device or not, the country of origin, and the number of page views that the user performed. I have a feeling in that last column, that's probably going to be pretty useful. Notice also that we're pulling data from this sample data set from between August 2016 through June of 2017. OK, let's try building a model to see if we can make some predictions based on these criteria, on these columns. We'll add a create model statement at the top with the table name and uh, give our sample a name, say just sample model. And we'll pass in some options, including the fact that we're doing a logistic regression. So we're just going to say yes or no, one of two options, whether or not a transaction took place. And we'll just put that at the top of our select statement. And that's really the only edit you'll need to turn your query into a model. Now while that's running, I want to point out that the aliasing on that first column of transactions, to call it a label, uh, that wasn't a coincidence. BQML looks specifically for a column named label so that it can figure out which column you want to predict on and which are the columns you want as inputs. So if you don't want to create a column called label for some reason, or if you have a column actually called label that you don't want to use as label, you can set the input label calls option in the create model statement. Say we call that column uh, transactions instead, right? And there was no column called labels. Then we could do something like this, where we pass in the name transactions as the column to look for as our label. What's really handy about BQML is that you don't need to move your data anywhere to take advantage of its features, since it's built right into BigQuery. This means that it can serve as a really easy way to get a first look at any notable patterns in your data. Once your model has started training, you can check out the training statistics if you want. Click on the model in the left-hand panel and uh, go over to the Model Stats tab down below. There, you can see the training progress as it works through the data set and improves the model performance with each pass. Now, when the Create Model statement finishes running, it's time to run evaluation using ml.evaluate. We'll take the original SQL query that we had for the data set and wrap it in ml.evaluate, passing in the newly created model and then selecting from that result. You will get an output that includes a number of different metrics of your model. Notice that we've actually queried dates that are outside of the range of the training data. And specifically, it's the month immediately following the dates that we used uh, to train on. We don't want to pass in the training data for evaluation because that would be like cheating on a test. 
Finally, it's time to run predict. Here, we'll wrap that same query we used during evaluation with the ml.predict function and pass the model in as well. This particular prediction groups up the countries, so we can see what their predictions are for each country ranked. We can also see that for this particular data set, most of the transactions came from the United States, though it might be worth diving in deeper to see how these match up across mobile devices and different operating systems. So that's BigQuery ML in a nutshell, a simple way to do some easy machine learning right within your SQL environment. I'm looking forward to seeing what models you build. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. And if you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that Like button and subscribe to get all the latest updates right when they come out. For now, check out BigQuery ML and start building your first model today. Thank you.